planets. Space. Millions of kilometers of land and unthinkable amounts of space to explore. But if there's nothing there, what's the point? Today we take a look at one of the key features of Star Citizen that will bring more activity to the game. A source of exploration, salvage, platforming, loot, and more. Since their introduction into the game, these derelict ships crashed in the ground and in space have blossomed into a pretty big deal and a good example of game development. Derelicts have scope crept their way into the main focus of the game, and today I'm going to show you how that happened, why it's important, and where this feature will go from here. This is the third Space Tomato Plus exclusive video of 2022, the Derelict Retrospective. And I'd like to thank you for supporting my Tomato Talks. If you fly around the game space in Star Citizen, you'll notice there's a lot of time and effort put into visuals, details, and the atmosphere of the game. And a common complaint you'll hear is that there's plenty of space, but not much to do. To those complaints, first I'd remind them how little we found exploring our own moon for years. But then I'd also point them to 2016 when we saw the very first derelicts in game. This derelict was significant for two reasons. First. It was our first dynamic point of interest, or at least it felt dynamic. It was the first of these smaller points of interest like caves, outposts, and crash sites that we now use on a daily basis. It was also significant because it was the first part of the change in content we were seeing due to the planet tech becoming part of the game. For those who don't know, planet surfaces weren't always part of the game. But now they are, and CIG recognizes that they kind of need to put things on these planet surfaces in order to make sure that they're not completely boring. Now, of course, derelicts exist in space, but this feature would not be anywhere near the size it is right now if they hadn't focused on the planetary surface version as well. So back in 2016 at Gamescom, we got to see our first derelict in play. This model was also quickly spread to groundside derelict ships by the end of the year. We actually hear a bit about how this process ballooned the importance of the feature back then. So initially, the sort of task that was given to us was to create these derelict sites. And at the beginning, it was sort of more of a technical challenge where we were just trying to break the ship apart. But then I think gradually over time, the more we started to delve into it, the more the possibilities of what could be done with it was just sort of growing and growing in scope. So by the end of it, we were thinking things like inhabited like space sites, sites that have been taken over by bandits. You could be set up as decoys for both potential enemies that could be kind of waiting there for, for players to then sort of jump into and then surprise them. And the more we thought about it, the more it sort of grew and the more ideas that sort of came about from it. So it started off as more of a technical sort of challenge and just trying to get something in there. And it sort of grew, grew and grew in scope as we went along, which was for us like a, a really exciting thing. Uh, there's obviously something to be said about scope creep here. Now, there are people who will tell you Star Citizen doesn't suffer from scope creep, and I used to believe that it was pretty in check. But there are certain features and systems that as supporting features are brought online and new things are theorized, they do kind of grow to be more than they originally were. Derelicts were not part of the plan, but were introduced for planet-side content. This, in turn, complicated the ship production process, requiring new tools to be made to procedurally build the wrecks, and would involve the addition of salvageable materials, AI who can interact with the areas, and a system that can maintain the site integrity of each derelict. It's a weird type of scope creep, but it does continue to dig into the process throughout the years, as you'll see. From 2016, we jumped forward a year to the summer of 2017, when the initial batch of derelict ships and their wreckage elements were almost complete. This was the official in-game launch of derelict ships. This was Derelict's T-0. This feature showcase was actually part of the content drought we experienced as CIG was preparing for 3.0. At this point, we could only look at these ships and imagine the gameplay. We were informed that these ships actually didn't require new broken parts to be made. All of the broken sections were already needed to be made for the damage pass anyways. This is something that has obviously not remained true since then. 
Also at the time, materials were pre-baked in, which I believe is no longer the case with procedural material wear and tear. We were also informed at the time that these wrecks were created to generate some mission scenarios, new areas for players to be drawn into for additional gameplay. One month later in July, we got another great look at Derelicts, with the Caterpillar making progress. It was chosen as the first ship to try out due to its already having a planned modular nature. While that modularity still hasn't come to fruition at the time of writing, the Caterpillar does still seem to be the testbed, being the first of the new generation of Rex. The development at the time on Derelicts was focused on highlighting the story and scenario that had caused each wreck. Star Citizen is being developed for continuous content, so when these wrecks are being dynamically spawned in due to events, they're meant to persist so that players can come back and find old finds. So when players do come across these wrecks, whether for the first time or maybe a return visit, they will be able to tell what the story is and how that ship ended up getting there. In the past, I've come across many ships with confusing crashes. Some of them look like they were calmly placed where they lay which is a bit disappointing and something I hope improves now that Planet Tech is a bit more agreeable. After this update from CIG in 2017, they basically went quiet in any major way on derelicts. While this initial implementation was launched in 2018 with Alpha 3.0, it was definitely an alpha implementation. The general consensus was that this was a proof of working technology that while it brought some fun scenarios for players to enjoy, it needed to be worked on a lot in the future. We would need new materials, new ships, new biomes, things to do in these derelicts and other features that needed to be added to this new location type. Recognizing that future growth we talked about earlier? Well, so did CIG. And after that initial update, they pretty much went quiet on the feature for four years until they were able to work on the next implementation. During this four years, a lot changed in the game. The way ships were made, the priorities of gameplay, the selection of points of interest, the underlying technology driving the game, and all the extras that might be sprinkled throughout these areas. So it made complete sense that at the beginning of 2022, with the introduction of Derelict's T1, it was the additional features that took front and center. Loot was highlighted as a good reason to find these spots. Hostile AI can make the situations more dangerous, and trip mines add a sense of suspense to the set piece. With this new update to derelict static points of interest became more engaging showcases for various forms of gameplay. Along with caves, these now act as a playground for the design teams to implement new features and tech coming from Squadron 42 focused teams. With these locations, we could see tie-ins to bounty hunting missions, exploration voyages, salvaging expeditions, and loot trips to make the entire game feel a little bit more grounded and connected in the near future. This falls in line with the new Montreal Sandbox team, as their task seems to be fleshing out existing locations, with jobs like hospital locations, building interiors, and derelicts being left up to them. This sprint on the feature is focused on taking what was once some cool places to visit in the game and turning them into some wondrous and mysterious points of interest to explore. These are no longer mission locations, they're now a part of the verse, a place for normal gameplay to find a new home. And they're doing this in new ways. It seems they're focusing now on procedurally sampling ship pieces and then systemically placing them in various areas on the planets. Now, I'm sure this is still going to be a great challenge given how big these planets are and the fact that the ship locations still need to be hand-selected, but it kind of seems like CIG is looking to standardize this derelict creation process. So, with the 316 branch of updates, Derelicts Tier 1 has been implemented through the addition of a dozen different Caterpillar crash sites. This disappointed me a bit actually. I was expecting to see more of the derelicts we already have, like the Starfarer and Freelancer, brought up to this higher polished state like the Caterpillar. It's very disappointing that after all this time, we seem to be taking a step back and starting over with the Caterpillar. But that does definitely tell us that the creative process has changed enough that CIG once again has to restart on a game development process. This is frustrating, but it does seem to be the actual case given the new footage we've seen. Luckily, CIG has shown they are well underway on the next ship to follow, and I do hope we can learn more from CIG about how the derelict process has changed, if it is separate from the damage pass that each ship goes through in the ship pipeline, and how they plan on speeding up this process in the future but we'll probably never have those answers. Instead, we can look at the future, or if you're watching this later, the present. 
The plans for derelict ships going forward is threefold. We're looking at an expansion in ships, biomes, and stories. We actually already see some in-engine signs of new ship derelicts as our first introduction to derelicts tier two. Most notably, the Reclaimer, a ship that I've always imagined would make the best derelict. As for biomes, as we've seen plenty of concept art and we know there are more biomes coming with Pyro and Nyx in the next couple of years, I don't think we'll see these wildly different biomes anytime soon. And considering the stories and scenarios we find these ships in, we've seen that CIG has the potential, and we know they want to make it happen. They also plan on these wrecks being persistent, able to be visited by everybody as they are created. Something that adds a lot of weight to the passing of time in game. We'll have to see if they can really build locations that feel alive and captivating. These derelict ships, they're gonna be a pretty big part of the game. They've already grown a ton since their 2016 introduction, and now they're being used to show off other features. At the time of writing, we're currently amidst a sprint to add more tier one derelicts to the game in a three quarter period. And I'm gonna be watching how this unfolds closely. The development of this feature looks to be a possible sign of how major features will be implemented at this stage. CIG likes to try different approaches to how they implement these things, and this seems like it would be a good one to keep an eye on. The journey that this feature has taken to get here is an interesting one, and it's just public facing enough to show how much a feature can change and grow to accommodate the game at a given time. I'm not a game developer, I have no idea if this is normal for such a major feature, but from what I've seen it kinda is. I'm pretty excited for what the future holds in this feature, and I hope it develops quickly from here, even in the alpha. I hope you've enjoyed this retrospective look at the development of Derelicts for Star Citizen, and your third video for 2022. I'll likely be making another public facing video that talks a little more about the Derelicts from what I've seen in the game and how they've been received sometime in the next couple months. But until then, enjoy the exclusive backlog. I'll see you guys in the next one, and have a great week.